<laughs> All right, today we're, we're learning about vectors today, and we're going to split this up into kind of two different halves of the vectors. So just some vocabulary that you need to get um, acquainted with. A vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. And you, know, you might have learned about vectors a little bit in physics, and this is as opposed to a scalar. A scalar is just a quantity of something. It's something that has been counted. Uh, but a vector is something that's been counted and directed in a particular uh, direction. So uh, we have other vocabulary here that's, here that's important for vectors. We have standard position. As a vector that's in standard position means that it begins at the origin, okay? And begins, even that is kind of a different way of thinking mathematically. A vector has a beginning, like a ray or an arrow, you know, or like our initial side when we were learning about angles of rotation that it, you know, it can rotate around clockwise around the origin. So this is kind of uh, the same idea. This is the beginning. Point A here is the beginning, and point B here is the end. So a standard position vector begins at the origin. The initial point is the starting point, like I just mentioned, and the terminal point on my vector here, point B, is the ending point. <clears throat> and then the direction angle is the directed angle from the positive x-axis, which is how we have counted angles in the past. That's how we counted our angles on the unit circle. We started counting, or we started measuring how wide the angle was at the positive x-axis, okay? So, and then the last thing, this is a big one, the magnitude is the length of the vector, and it typically represents, perhaps, you could think of it as how strong or how large the vector is, how big the quantity that was that was counted. So this is our vector. We have a couple of ways we can name vectors while we're looking at this picture. Uh, we can name them with a lowercase a and then a little arrow on top, or every now and then you see it as a, like a little lowercase letter and a, like a half arrow, you know, with just like the upper part of the arrow, like that. Or you can name a vector by its initial and terminal points. So we could name this vector a, b, like that. Okay, it's a couple of different ways to name vectors. All right, a little more vocabulary. Uh, we can compare and do math with vectors. We can uh, add them up and do various operations with them, and we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, and so we have to have a way of comparing them. So two parallel vectors are vectors that share the same or opposite direction, and the direction is like the slantedness, how they're slanted. They're parallel lines, but they're not necessarily the same magnitude. Okay, so uh, for example, you could have like these two vectors are parallel vectors, even though they're not the same length, and they don't even have to be going in the same direction. Okay, just as long as they have the same slantedness, they are parallel vectors. Okay, equivalent vectors <clears throat> are vectors that go in the same direction and the same magnitude. So looking at these green ones that I drew, if I wanted these to be equivalent, vectors, I would have to make them the same length, same direction, and the same slantedness, okay? Same, same length and same direction. Opposite vectors are vectors that are the same length, have the same magnitude, but they go in opposite directions. So looking at these green ones again, if I wanted to make these opposite vectors, boom, I just change the direction and make the other one go the other way, but they still are parallel. <clears throat> And then lastly, the resultant vector is one single vector that represents the sum of two or more vectors. So uh, in this picture that I included in the slide, I have vector A, and that's in the blue. And I have added three vector A's together. And I've done this visually. When we visually add or graphically add two vectors or three vectors together, we attach them to one another tip to tail. Okay, so like the tip of you know the first vector a added or attached to the tail of what it's being added to another vector a and then tip to tail the third vector a is attached its tail to the tip of the previous ones okay and then this red vector is one single vector that represents the total sum of the other three we're calling that three vector a's okay does that make sense all right so uh, the first thing, that kind of picture leads us to the first thing that we're going to be doing. I'm going to have you adding and subtracting vectors tip to tail visually. Okay. And then later on, we're going to do it uh, 
using the kind of the numbers behind those vectors. So here's our we our two methods here. We primarily are going to use uh, this first triangle method, tip to tail. Um, there's another method called tail to tail. I think it's extra work. Uh, and so if you want to know about that after the lesson, you're welcome to ask me. But we're going to be, and I'm going to encourage you to use this triangle method here. So let's see how this works. So if we have the three given vectors here, vector m and vector n and vector p, and I, I went ahead and gave you the direction and the length or the magnitude of those directions off to the right, and, and I want you to draw a resultant vector for each one of these operations. Vector m, first vector m plus two vector n's. So here's how this works. I'm going to draw vector m. It's just a sketch, so do your best. Try to get the correct length and uh, slantedness. So there's vector m. And then I'm going to add 2n to it. So I'm going to take two vector n's and attach them to the end of the arrow for vector m. So vector n is a little tiny vector that goes straight to the left. Right? I see that right there. So at the end here, I'm going to add vector n. There's vector n. And then another vector n. Another vector n. Okay, so this is m, and that is 2n. Okay, now that is like the work of doing the math problem. But that is not the final answer. Remember, the instructions told us to draw the following resultant vectors. And what is a resultant vector? Is it the trail of going from start to finish? No, it's a single vector that connects the start to the finish, the ultimate start to the ultimate finish. So your resultant vector is this one. Resultant vector m plus 2n. That is the answer to the problem. The blue vector trail is not the answer to the problem. It is the work. Wouldn't it be silly to do a math problem and to do all the work but not write the answer? That would be so silly. So please do not forget to graph that resultant vector. It's honestly more important than the trail itself. And so I think maybe in my key for the homework, I kind of went in and, and I erased, uh, or like I made the resultant or the, the trail of vectors dotted because it is most important to have the resultant vector. I would like for you to include both. So on your quiz, please don't just go in and, and like do one green line you know, because then it looks like to me that you just guessed or you peeked at your neighbor's quiz, and I don't know where you, how you know it slants that way or goes that far. So please do draw the trail on your quiz so I know where you got your resultant vector. But <clears throat> that's how we do a, a vector diagram. So why don't you try the second two on your own now that you kind of know how they go, and I'll put my diagram up there as you work. So kind of as you're working, that first one, there's, there's p, vector p, plus vec two vector n's, and then minus vector m. So minus vector m is going to take, if, if you weren't sure, it's going to take vector m, and it's going to go in the opposite direction. So if that, if up here in the right, if this is vector m, then the opposite vector is what I just drew in purple, negative, that is minus vector m or negative vector m. It's the exact same line with the arrow on the other side. And so that's what I'm attaching tip to tail uh, to the end of you know, my current vector trail here, my vector diagram. Vector m, like this, minus, that's negative vector m. <clears throat> and then the final resultant vector, don't forget to draw that one. That one goes from the ultimate start to the ultimate end. P, we'll call it P plus 2N minus M. We'll call it by the pieces, the vectors that made it or that summed it. Yeah, someone just asked about the, the direction of the arrow. The arrow must go from, at the very end the very end of the vector so that's a common mistake some people will try to put the arrow you know kind of like at the beginning to make I don't know like a water cycle situation you know the water cycle 
yeah, yeah. So that's that's bad. That's not how the arrows go. Uh, we want them to go from the start to the finish. Otherwise, it makes it look like we're talking about a vector that goes from the finish to the start. So that's our start. There's our the end of our resultant vector, so it gets an arrow. The two trails should meet. Maybe think of the resultant vector as the shortcut vector. You know, and then the, the trail is the, the long way. <clears throat> so that is the second example. And I'll let you try the third example, if you haven't already. Okay, so there's the vector trail for that third example, right? I have vector m, regular vector m, and then uh, minus three vector n's, so vector n but going in the opposite direction, and then uh, one fourth vector p. So it's just it's vector p, but it's a fourth the distance, one fourth of the distance. And so, and this kind of creates a cool situation where you have the resultant vector crossing the path of the individual pieces, the trail. And that's totally okay. Okay, that happens from time to time. M minus 3N plus 1 fourth P, our resultant vector. <clears throat> so there is how to draw a vector diagram. Any questions on this? So obviously this is very imprecise. Your picture, I'm willing to bet, was quite a bit different from mine. You know, because we're not robots, we, we just, we draw things differently. Uh, and, and math, but math kind of prides itself on being a pre very precise study. It's a study of precision and patterns. And so we need to attach some values, some numeric values, some measurables to these vectors. And we have several ways of doing that. One of the ways of doing that is by using component form to track exactly the movement of the vector. And component form, uh, is a bit like slope in your Algebra 1 classes. So if I have vector AB, a vector that goes from A to B here, then the component form of this would be two numbers, the change in X and the change in Y. And we write component form with these angled brackets to distinguish them from an ordered pair. We wouldn't want to use regular parentheses because everybody would just think we're talking about a point. So however far horizontally that vector traveled, that is the change in the x's. And then however far vertically the vector traveled would be the change in the y's. You know? And this is all assuming that we have our vector plotted on a coordinate grid and we know the x comma y of each start, start and end point. Right? We know uh, the ordered pair where it starts and ends, the initial and terminal points. Okay? So if you need a formula, obviously if you just subtract the x's, you get the x distance. If you subtract the y's, you get the y distance. You need to go y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. You need to go in that order, the second value minus the first. So let's practice this a bit. You can see how it comes together. <clears throat> Find the component form of vector AB, right? A little vector symbol above. With initial point A, so there's your ordered pair for your first point, your starting place, and terminal point B, there's another ordered pair for that, or, uh, for that vector, then find the magnitude of vector AB. So, you know, graphically, we can plot it on a coordinate grid and kind of get a picture of what's going on here. It's 1, negative 3, so 1, negative 3. There's vector A, or point A. 1, negative 3, and then point B is like up here, point B, 1, positive 3, and the vector goes from A to B. How do I know it goes from A to B and not B to A? How do I know that? Yeah, it's in the name. It's in the name. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's in the name. A and then B is second, but also the, they called the points. They called A the initial point, and they called point B the terminal point. Okay. So let's track this. You can see visually that like how far, if, if component form is the change in the X's and the change in the Y's, how far horizontally did it go from A to B? It's not a trick question. No, horizontally. 
zero, right? It was at one at the beginning, at point A, and then it didn't go left or right at all. It just went straight up to point B and stayed at, at the x value of one. So we should have, we have zero movement on the axis. And then how far y did it move? Six. six. Now, did it go six up or six down? Up. It went six up. Okay. If it had gone six down from start to finish, that would be a negative six. Okay. So zero, six is our component form. And if you did the math of subtracting the x's, you know, that would, that would get you this same exact answer you got. The, X, the A point is x1, y1. The B point is x2, y2. And so the math goes x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, which is 1 minus 1 and 3 minus negative 3, which gives you 0, 6. Okay, so your little formula there will work as well, which is, you know, that's a helpful formula because what if... What if point A and point B are like these terrible points with terrible decimals and whatnot? You'd want to have you know, some math you can follow, not just have to graph it every time. So the last step here was just to find the magnitude of AB, and that's simply the length, the length of that vector. So how long was this vector? It's very simple. Six. Okay. What if the... This, is, this brings up an interesting situation. This, obviously, I could just count it on this because it just that vector just went straight up but what if it was slanted what if what if we were dealing with a vector that was perhaps going like that how would we find the length of that vector well we could make a right triangle out of it and do Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find the length of that vector and the length of the length would be c squared, or c, it would What's be the c. The magnitude is the length of the vector. So, and that will always be the hypotenuse if we're dealing with vectors. So, okay, all right. So that that part's pretty easy. Coming up with component form from an initial point and a terminal point—that's pretty easy. Where it really gets interesting is like. The whole point that I showed you that is because we wanted a way of coming up with a resultant vector that's more efficient than having to draw a diagram. And so we want to be able to add and subtract those same vectors that we did on that first page without using numbers instead. And we can do that with the components of the vectors. Okay, so if we have two vectors added together, check this out. If we have two vectors added together, then we can take the x values of a and b, right? If, there, if vector A is, you know, uh, these two, A, A1 and A2 are the X and Y values of component form, and vector B has B1 and B2 for its X and Y values, then we can add those vectors by adding their components, adding the X's, comma, adding the Y's. And if we wanted to subtract those vectors, we would just subtract the components, okay? Or if we wanted to multiply a value into that vector, we would just multiply that value to each of its components. Okay, so we can, these components allow us to do all kinds of cool math with the vectors. So here is an example. We've got 2w plus y, and I gave you the vectors over here on the right, but this time I also gave you the component forms of those vectors so that I can show you that the vector diagram is only an imprecise way of getting what you know how to get mathematically. So let's do the vector diagram first to get the resultant vector. 2, 2 w plus y. So for 2 w. plus y. Okay. So there's like a kind of just a, a sketch, quick drawing of it. And there is my resultant vector. This is 2 w plus y. Okay, there's my 2w, and there's my y. <clears throat> so the green resultant vector is what we should expect to get. And then let's go ahead and work the numbers to see if, see if this makes sense. So just, just to kind of clarify what I'm expecting to see on the numbers is I'm expecting to have a, a final vector that goes to the right a bit and then down a lot. 
right? Okay, let's work the numbers and see. So we have 2 times vector w. So 2 and then bracket 2 comma negative 5. And that is being added to vector y. So plus 2, 0 with the brackets. So that's my setup. If I'm multiplying a scalar, which is this multiplier out in front of w, that's a scalar. If I'm multiplying that to a vector, I'm simply distributing it to each component. Okay. So that gives me 4, comma, negative 10. Right? If I have two vector w's and each one went 2 to the right, well, then collectively they went 4 to the right. right? And if, if each vector w went 5 down well, and I had two of them, well, that makes sense. Now, collectively, they went 10 down. I'm still adding that to vector y. So here we go. I have uh, two vectors now that went, one goes 4 to the right, one goes 2 to the right. So collectively, they go 6 to the right. One goes negative 10 or 10 down. One goes none down, so negative 10. All right, so I'm adding the x's and I'm adding the y's. I'm adding their components to get this vector. And this is my resultant vector. It is the green vector that I already drew. And lo and behold, it sure does go uh, a bit to the right and a lot down, 6 to the right and 10 down. Okay, It's just more exact than my, my pathetic looking diagram there. Okay. <clears throat> so you try this. The diagrams really are becoming obsolete. Let's use the math to add and subtract these vectors, the components. So here we've got some vector components for vector w, y, and z, and they want you to calculate three vector y minus two vector z. You try it. Okay, so there's your setup. I went ahead and I put my scalars outside of the component form. I'm going to distribute those. And just a pro tip, um, I don't know if you remember back in your like middle school math days, but if I'm having to distribute a negative, I go ahead and put a plus sign in there, and I distribute the negative into whatever, you know, whatever I need to distribute it. And that goes whether I'm doing regular algebra or you know, these component ca calculations. I'm going to distribute that negative, and I'll keep a plus on the outside. That's a good habit. <clears throat> so this ends up being 6, 0, plus positive 2, positive 8. Because negative times negative is positive. And then I'm simply adding the components. So 6 plus the 2, the adding the x's, and then adding the y's. So my resultant vector is 8. 6 plus 2 is 8, comma 8, 0 plus 8. <clears throat>